Welcome. We're so glad you are here for our panel here about how the NFL is innovating with AWS and Amazon Prime Video. I'm Cynthia Freeland. I work for the NFL Network. I do data analytics. I love being able to talk about this and not have to say it's kind of like Moneyball for football. So thank you for being a really smart and educated audience and for your time, effort, and energy to be here this morning. I have an amazing panel with me, so I'm just going to get started with some introductions here. First of all, I have Justin Burks, who is the GM for Worldwide Sports, Strategy and Business Development at Amazon Web Services. In his role, he leads the development and execution of AWS's global sports partnerships and the ongoing management of all AWS partnerships in the sports and entertainment categories. Justin launched AWS Sports Marketing in 2015 with AWS's landmark partnership with Major League Baseball, and under his leadership, the program has grown to include partnerships with Formula One, PGA Tour, NHL, and more, but of course, my personal favorite, the National Football League. And then I have Eric Orm, who's the Director of Worldwide Sports Product and Engineering for Prime Video at Amazon. In his role, he leads the product, engineering, and operations strategy for Prime Video's global sports business. Eric established the team in 2019, where they've since delivered an engaging and high-quality live viewing experience for customers including the English Premier League, uh, League One, MLB, NBA, the US Open, numerous other live sporting events and concerts, and of course, at the NFL with Thursday Night Football. I'm gonna let the two of them both tell us really quick, just, you know, what's the next thing? Everybody always asks you, what's the last thing you bought on Amazon? I wanna know what the <laughs> next thing you're gonna buy is, because we all know that we have 15 boxes waiting when we get home, so what's the next thing you're gonna order? Well, we, we were just talking about the dogs we have at home, so I think, you know, definitely a bunch of milk bones and, and toys for my uh, big yellow lab Jack at home. Eric? Nice. Uh, going skiing in about 30 days. The kids have grown, so I have to, like, go home this weekend, make sure everybody puts their stuff on, and then, <laughs> you know, buy, buy the gap, basically. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Okay, next up we have Larry Fitzgerald. Larry is a philanthropist. Yes! Even more. Larry's a philanthropist, business owner, investor, former 11-time, not just 10, 11-time All-Pro wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals of the NFL, of course. He holds many records for the franchise and the league. You ready for them? Including 40 single-season and career franchise records with the Cardinals in the following categories. Most receptions, most receiving yards, most receiving touchdowns, most total touchdowns, most games with 100 or more receiving yards, and the list goes on and on. And I'm ad-libbing here, and he doesn't know I'm saying this, but... I want to be the first to say Hall of Famer because he just hasn't been retired long enough, but he's a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer. He would way too humble to say it himself, so I will say it, and now I get to say that I said it first. There you go. Selfish. Thank you. <laughs> and what's the next thing you're going to be buying on Amazon? Uh, I, got a, I had a package delivery yesterday. I had to buy some AAA batteries that came in. You know? So, it, you know, the need is different all the time. I got three young sons, so, you know, you never know what the requests are going to be. Exactly. Well, you know, never know. Maybe the next time you can get some like rubber bands or something yeah. fun like that too. And last but not least, Jennifer Langton, who serves as the Senior Vice President of Health and Safety Innovation for the National Football League. She manages the NFL's medical investment portfolio, which supports engineering advancements and independent medical research aimed to improve the health and safety of NFL players. She previously served as the NFL's Vice President of Business Ventures and Finance, where she was responsible for strategic planning and financial management of the league's business units. Before, before the NFL, I love this, it's so fun. She served as the Chief Financial Officer for North America of Atari, the interactive entertainment company. She's a graduate of NYU Stern School of Business and received her BA from UVA, where she played Division I lacrosse. Nice to see you, Jennifer. See you. What is the next thing you will be buying on Amazon? Well, because I have been away here pretty much all week, I will be buying dog treats. I have a <laughs> chocolate Labradoodle, and I get my Stella and Chewy from Amazon. I love So it's all already actually in my shopping cart. Perfect. Well, just to kind of set the table here a little bit, Amazon, obviously, the, what we're doing here when it comes to AWS and sports, the world's leading sports organizations are leveraging AWS to elevate fan engagement produce insights from performance analytics, create enhanced live broadcasts, and deliver smart venue experiences, all while enabling flexibility, lowered cost, and increased return on investment. So where do we fit in the sports industry in general? We have a slide here on that. I have to go grab my little clicker here to make sure that we have that. 
boom, boom. So there's the, the different categories that we talked about here. And we're gonna start with the digital athlete. We're gonna to to talk about three important topics, the digital athlete, we're gonna talk about next-gen stats, and then we're gonna talk about Thursday night football and what's going on with Prime Video. So let's start with the digital athlete here, and I got a little video for you. What if this isn't just a stadium? What if it's actually a data source that could shape the future of football to help keep players healthy, safer, and reduce injuries? The NFL with Amazon Web Services is using artificial intelligence to create the digital athlete, an injury prevention and prediction tool, running any play from any angle in any condition. We're talking infinite simulations because striving to make the game safer is no longer a what if, but what's next. I love that. So obviously underneath everything is data. And Jennifer, I just want to say, what, what is the digital athlete? We'll start with you. What is the digital athlete? Um, the digital athlete, by definition, um, is a virtual representation of each and every player on our field. It's a 360 degree view of that player and their experience. When I say that experience, that's in training, that's in practice, as well as in game. And what we're looking to do is to create a precision or a perfect picture of that athlete so we understand what their needs are as it relates to preventing and or recovering from injury, but also to help them to optimize at their greatest level. We set a very audacious goal with our digital athlete to predict injury, and we are well on our way with partnership with AWS to do so. So why AWS is a good question. So for years, as you've seen in that video, and I'm hoping every single one of you watches football every single Thursday through Monday plus, um, but for years, we collected a vast amount of data, and we continue to. In fact, year over year, the data is exponential. So from videos, from sensors, from RFID tags, we collect data, and that helps us to gain insights to how we reduce injury. We had some really early success with concussions and stimulating the helmet marketplace. We are down 25% in concussions, sustained now for four years. But that process was so manual. In addition, it was also the time synchronization to get the data and get proper insights from the data was extremely labor intensive um, and again, manual. So we went on our leadership team that I drove, went on quite an exhaustive road trip. It was a lot of fun though. Um, and what we were looking for was not just a cloud and cloud computing partner, but somebody that really understood our vision and was committed to be able to predict injury. In addition, we also wanted them to understand that what we were building had not been built before, it was new and novel. And being that it was new and novel, it could have an impact that I believe went and will transcend through sport and all athletes, especially as an athlete that did blow out my knee. I want to impact all of those lacrosse players, all those girls, but also would have reached far beyond sport. And so we selected AWS, one, because they were a trusted partner and a very successful partner with next-gen stats. They are, in fact, the best in cloud and cloud computing. Um, they understand how to take this vast amount of data and help us to gain insights and do analytics on it. So they were the best partner, but they really did understand and commit to our vision. And that vision to predict, it's not just creating, which we have done the best in class cloud and cloud computing environment, but it was really helping us to put all of that data, time synchronization is so key for us. We used to record injuries by quarter, and now for milliseconds of video, we are so automated to be able to integrate and aggregate data for longitudinal records that we're able to do such sophisticated modeling. So for those reasons, we selected AWS. One more for you on this one. Just so we can kind of leave the room with the primary elements of what's going into this digital. So if there's one thing that the audience can go away from and be like, what are like the two things that are the most primary elements for this digital athlete as it stands right now? Yeah, well, risk modeling, certainly. So we're able to, I have Larry to my left, so I have to. You know, what we're able to do is we have so much injury data, we have so much performance data, but really understand and be able to give this to our clubs and to the players is understanding training loads. And understanding training loads is key metrics. A team has a 53-man roster. We can build models with accuracy and precision across all teams for 53, but up to the 90-man roster at the beginning of season in training camp. So our ability to be able to build 
and train models is much different than a team's. We want the teams, and in fact, we're rolling out the digital athlete to all 32 this year, to be able to, to build off of those advanced analytics that we are building for them. So that players, we understand what the ideal training load is for every individual player. Helps them to mitigate risk of injury, but also helps them to get to optimal performance. So that's one of the key things for a rollout this year. Absolutely. Larry, how might some of these innovations have impacted your career? At, look, we're I'm, I'm the same age as you, so we, were, we got it. You, you started a little before this digital athlete was sort of conceived of. So how might it have impacted your career? Because let's face it, you lasted in the league way longer than an average athlete, and even an average athlete who is of your caliber, meaning such a high elite athlete. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been essential. And I want to thank Jennifer and her team, you know, because there's no way, you know, I'm able to play for 17 seasons if the game doesn't evolve and change. And, you know, when I got into the league in 2004, it was a much different game. The, the physicality, the hits on the quarterbacks, the blind side, cracking blacks, all these things that were getting people hurt um, and, you know, leaving a, a nasty mark, you know, on our game. Because nobody wants to see, you know, players banged up. You know, when you're a fantasy owner, you're a big fan of a team, you want to see your, your best players and the best players on the field on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. You know, like, that's the, that's the hope. And, um, you know, just in terms of, like, tracking, you know, our, our daily input, you know, practice, you know. So Wednesdays are our heavy load days, and then Thursdays are – are not as heavy, but pretty high intensity. And then Thursdays more, or Fridays, more of a, a dress rehearsal, you know, for what you're going to be doing on Sunday. And so being able to understand, you know, maybe to, maybe based on Sunday's performance, you know, I played 70 snaps, you know, I had 10 catches, and you know, I, I got a shoulder bruise, and I have a, I had to get my knee drained. I probably shouldn't practice on Wednesday, right? Um, and so being able to understand just based on the workload, you know, what my preparation for the following week should be ha has been so very helpful. Um, also, you know, it's something as, as an athlete that you can utilize also, you know, as I got older to, to try to impart that wisdom on the younger players so they can adopt it at an earlier age and be able to have a long, successful, sustained career as well. And, and so it's been very helpful, um, you know, for the athlete today. And it's even going down even further than that now. I see it also in high school, you know, because the NFL is the standard. It, like, it is the, it is the best in the business. And so when they do it at a very high level, it trickles down to college and it trickles down to high school. And, and it makes the game for my son, who's a freshman in high school, much safer. You know, the innovation, the think tanks, all of the things that they've done to create safer helmets and, and better shoulder pads and cleats. You know, they have a chart in our locker room that would tell us which cleats, you know, provide the least amount of friction on field turf, you know, to prevent you from having an ankle sprain or a knee injury. All of this information is readily available and it's trickling down all the way down to the youth leagues, which is only gonna make our kids have a safer game, which it makes me very happy because the long-term viability of our game will, will last forever and that's what we all hope. So when we were talking about this panel and we first got together, I was kind of noticing the interaction between player and the league. So Jennifer being the league and obviously Larry being the player. And even before we got to the technical aspects of modeling it out, there's obviously some areas where you know, players have different views than the league on, on, how this, on how this should be done or what the best opportunities are. So if you could address just some of the, how you've worked through some of those challenges before even getting into how to model it out, right? Like, how does it all come together for you? Well, um, we have many stakeholders that we work with, with, each, with each, at each team to get to the player. So there's many conduits. That's sports science, that's team physicians. Athletic trainers, strength and conditioning coaches, equipment managers are so vital to us because we're looking to advance, as Larry said. Helmets have increased. We've stimulated the marketplace and provided to the helmet manufacturers why helmets, right, don't perform on field. They are a higher risk for a player to get concussion. And so it's vital for us to explain to those individuals why it is a player shouldn't be wearing that helmet so that they could work one-on-one -on -one with the player, and that's one example. Some of the challenge, though, and I'm going to ask you to come on, is behaviors. It's superstition. And so you could see the poster in the locker room. What was startling to me, we have all of the data to support that this is not a good performing helmet. Statistically significant, it's on the poster, it's on the lowest bar. However, players still want to wear it. And so whether that's superstition, whether that is the mirror test because it's the look of it, it's real. And it was like, wow, but you're X percentage more likely to get concussion. And you have a career ahead of you. 
and you are so fortunate to be in this position, nope, not doing it. You know, and we even worked with the NFLPA to prohibit helmets. And so we had to grandfather those that didn't want to change for a year just so that they can acclimate to another helmet. So it's very interesting. You can have the data, you can have all the models. I'm so fortunate that I work with the most elite biomechanical engineers, the most elite players, but behaviors are very hard to change. Yeah. Absolutely. That's just not NFL players. No, that's, it's not. That's for, it's every, not, that's for it's everybody. Not. My grandma's no. 96 and all of us text message and FaceTime. I'm like, Grandma, you'll talk to us like 10 times more often if you just learn on a FaceTime. I'm telling you, we, we, we can make it happen. And, you know, you know, so it's not just football players, but I think we all understand and realize that, you know, you guys have our best interests in hand. Um, players, um, management, league-wide, we understand it's a, it's a partnership, you know. Um, the better the league does, the better the players do. The better the players perform, the more they, they show up in the community, the better they do, the, the more the league shines. So collectively, we can grow together. Um, I, I've seen a big change, you know, I've been out two years, but before I left, I saw a big change in players really taking a, a a more proactive approach about doing things that were safer for them. You know, if there was information that we would be um, presented to in a, in a meeting, it, uh, players would be like, you know, it's, it doesn't look great, but you know, you tell them it's gonna, it's gonna make me play a little bit longer, I can earn a little bit more on the back end, okay, I'll change, you know? And so I, I think they're starting to understand a lot better that, you know, the, the, the technology, the things that are being created for their benefit are, are worthwhile and they're willing to make those changes. And this year we rolled out um, what we call the guardian cap. We mandated that for certain positions in training camp because training camp is the highest rate of injury in that acclimation period. The positions that were mandated, 50% less concussion. Now, would you have worn the guardian cap? It looks a little silly, yeah. but when <laughs> players see those numbers and they don't feel the impact, they wear it. And so we really do, everything that we do is at the center, the, the player is at the center of all that we do. It's very scientific. And again, we have the best in class experts that help us, inclusive of AWS as a partner. Um, but you know, there are some things that are behavioral that are very hard to change. So I wanted to point out the human element because the best sort of technologies come from really realizing who you're serving. So how have you handled those technologically challenging points that are going to happen whenever you're trying to model out something that is inherently a new technology and trying to really capture the human element? Yeah, you know, um, testing, it's like our consumer insights testing is working with the players. And so um, everything that we do, again, is those stakeholders at the clubs where we do on-field validations of protective equipment, and then, of course, we have the players wear them just for feedback and background tests, but it's very iterative. As technology is moving, we have to be as quick as technology is moving and always getting those insights. The most valuable thing to us is the voice of the player because they're the ones that are giving us the feedback. It doesn't matter, it does matter, forgive me. It does matter how a cleat test in laboratory to see if there is traction. But if Larry is wearing it and he doesn't get traction for a certain and he needs a custom fit, it's his voice. We have to make sure that he is performing at his best and it works for him. So that really is vital to all of the testing that we do as the voice of the player. I love that and I love everything that happens in game, in the moment, the precision, the fast response of everything has been really an amazing innovation, at least from the, you know, I, I obviously watch, analyze the sport, and I don't want, I want all of the best players to be playing just like everyone here does. Predictive analysts. You know, that's, you know, you get better predictions when there's better <laughs> players playing, you know, who would have thought? Anyways, I guess the best question to kind of summarize this, like, part of our discussion is, how can this be extended? What you've learned from the NFL and from players in the NFL, how can this be extended to other sports so that what's going on with AWS isn't just an NFL-specific thing, but rather mm -hmm. extends to all of the other sports that Amazon or any other you know, league is, is really trying to solve for? Yeah, well, as Larry said uh, you know, earlier, is that we really are the preeminent leader in sport and what we're building, and I think that the digital athlete itself is really breaking grounds. It's a new frontier to be able to predict injury. And we've already gotten other interest. So it's pretty easy to answer that. I mean, we've built a um, thank you to having all of our data in the cloud. Time synchronized is so key. Mm -hmm. But what we did, and we crowdsourced it with AWS, is we built a helmet detection model. So I used to have NFL technicians one technician would review a game and count with his eye manually head impacts. It'd take four days. Now with computer vision techniques, we have a model, an algorithm, that detects, 
tracks and identifies that helmet to a player. The more models that you further develop, the more data that you train that on, we've fed seven years into that model of video and our next-gen stats data. Precision of the model has way surpassed human equivalency, but we have had impacts of all plays, all plays back for seven years. What we can do with that, we've had a 25% reduction of concussion, but now we have so much more information to how impacts happen, we put that to, into injury prevention strategies. The next thing that, if I can get to the okay. announcement. Okay. Oh, yeah. So what that, I wasn't gonna let you get you away know, with not announcing So it. what that does for us, though, is those type of models and the work that we're doing give us so much more insight and understanding for our game. We had great success, and one of our key priorities for this year is not just reduction of concussion, but head impacts. So we're going further. On Monday, we are announcing, well, we're announcing now, but it is launching live on Monday, is a contact detection model. And so that's a contact detection system where specialists, experts, computer scientists can log on to Kaggle, and they can work with our video and our next-gen stats data and help us identify contacts, the duration, the frequency, and the time of that contact. Now, for all contacts, getting a better comprehensive understanding of how contacts happen in our game, we can put together injury prevention models. So you can see how manual efforts are now being replaced by computers, by algorithms, but it gives us, we had a bunch of vast data that we were collecting, but we're generating more data from video that will be more informed. So I encourage everybody, if you can model, you can. No? Listen, I can mo I model all the time. I, <laughs> trying, are you trying to give me more work? But My please, goodness. log on and share. Uh, log on to Kegel on Monday and be a part of helping us. Yes. I mean, we are looking to predict injuries, and you can help the NFL to do so. So it is very exciting. It's a good challenge. I think that's a really fun one. And that actually leads us really well into what we're going to talk about next, which is maybe the thing I'm the most familiar with, which are the next-gen stats. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a fun video on this one, too. In the NFL, most statistics for fans have been geared toward offensive skill players, leaving a gap in understanding defensive strategies. To address this, the NFL's Next Gen Stats team and the AWS Machine Learning Solutions Lab built a first-of-its-kind AI system that can now identify eight different types of man and zone defensive coverages. Teaching a computer to see and understand what's happening on defense is incredibly hard. To correctly identify these defenses, the technology needs to be able to factor in variables, like how defenders line up before the snap, disguising coverages, adjusting to offensive player movement once the ball is snapped, player acceleration, and even blown coverage assignments. Trained on over 60,000 NFL plays over the last four seasons, the ML Solutions Lab developed a flexible system that uses raw tracking data and a novel machine learning architecture that can correctly identify the defense just seconds after the play occurs. Built on AWS SageMaker, it incorporates a custom module for complex temporal data and combines multiple independently trained AI models to handle data, label noise, and more. It captures 10 frames per second over the first five seconds of every offensive play. However, the AWS team was able to design the system efficiently, so it only needed to use every other frame instead of all the data. By using AI and new advanced analytics to make these predictions, AWS and the NFL are broadening awareness of defensive metrics and bringing fans one step closer into the huddle. So for those of you who don't know, our next-gen stats capture the real-time location data, speed, and acceleration for every player on every play on every inch of the field. So sensors throughout the stadium track tags that are placed on the shoulder pads, which chart individual movements within inches, resulting in hundreds of millions of data points for each and every play. Now, I use the next-gen stats. I like this like basically my whole career. Well, I mean, you know, 
thank you. Um, but look, when we model using all of the next gen stats, we're able to provide incremental value both for the viewers. It kind of unites what all of us are trying to do here, right? So to the viewers of NFL, which is who I primarily am speaking to, fans of the league, your fantasy team, you can get amazing next gen stats. By the way, I did a little bit of back of the envelope information for all of you fantasy players. And if you're looking for which receiver is the one, you can tell me if this checks out with the gut <laughs> test, uh, which receiver is going to score you the most, just look Look for air yards per reception. Yeah, yeah, you like a good air yards per reception. It's good for fantasy points. Yeah. Most likely to score a touchdown that way, et cetera. Um, and also I like yards after contact over expected, especially see Tyreek Hill, see Jalen Waddle, both of them. Great, so we wanna talk quickly about the thing that actually matters, which is health and safety. So just talk about how the next gen stats have done that and then we'll kind of move on to where it goes next. Yeah, well, next gen stats is used, as I was mentioning earlier, for that risk modeling. Because what we are able to see, we have so many different data points from location, speeds, acceleration, decel deceleration on our field. And we're able to measure then the training loads in game, but also in practice that help us to come up with optimal loads for you know, each athlete. And so that will help us to mitigate the injury and also optimize performance. And if you log in to our challenge, you can be using NextGen stats there too. Perfect, yeah. I love it. There's a plug. <laughs> I love, that's why I love it. Um, Larry, how do players either think about, use, or like feel about NextGen stats just in general? I think we, I think the players love it. I mean, I, I'd be in the locker room all the time, and guys would be like, "Man, Fitch, you're so slow, bro. Like, you ain't, you haven't broke 19 miles an hour in like four weeks. You know what I mean? Like, I do that every day in practice. You know, so it's something that players talk about, and it, and it makes it um, actually very useful for the coaches as well, um, because. You know, when you're quantifying who's going to be able to get the ball, who should be getting more touches, you can look at all of, the, all of those stats and be able to say, look, this is, this is why DeAndre should be getting 15 targets a game. This is why James is more successful running the ball on the left side of the, of, of the, of the field. Uh, this is why we want to use Hollywood in the screen game because he's so dynamic, you know, once he gets the ball in his hands. And so all of these things are utilized not only by the players but by the coaches, and it makes it for, you know, you know, kind of fair when you're in there going over and play, be like, why is such and such getting this play? Because he's a lot faster than you and he makes more plays with you. His catch percentage on jump balls is much higher than yours. So this is why you're not getting that, you know? So it kind of shuts down some of the conversations as well. Although, I don't know though, because I was looking at tight coverage, which Next Gen Stats is yep. when they're within one yard of being, you know, right up. You can be like, excuse you. Tight coverage, I got this. Yeah. Nobody else is better than me at that. So especially when you're running on, you know, inside the, inside the numbers. Yeah. Just, just saying, just saying you have some ones you can counteract that with as well. So it's interesting to see as they're developing, and you just saw this stuff about the coverages and identifying defenses. For younger players, do you think that's going to be something where a coach is going to be like, hey, you know, let's go look at some of these past, like as we're looking at film, like, you know, the next gen stats can help them. You've seen cover four like six times. Like, what are you seeing here that maybe isn't, that isn't jiving with what, what you're doing on the field? So when I would talk to the younger players when I would, when I would get in, I would always tell them that football is, a, is an open book test. You can take in as much information as you possibly can. And the more information you have, the better and more effective you're going to be on the football field. And so, you know, when we are watching tape and you see, you know, we're playing against the Seattle Seahawks and you see them banging their hands together, you know, that used to be their old sign for, for quarters, right? Um, they attacked the shoulder, that means they were going to cover two, you know? So like all of these things that you're learning and you're watching on tape and next gen stats teaching you, now when you come out of the huddle and you check to a different play and you see them giving that hand signal, you can look to your quarterback and, and he understands that, you know, we, we have quarters now. And the big post most likely will be open if we run the drag across, you know, like, so, like, just having that information and the more you study and understand what you're seeing on the field, you can utilize it to actually make you better and more effective on the football field. So being able to get this information in the classrooms is, uh, is vital to your success. I always say it's like the Dewey Decimal System, right? You're just like, you're making it easier, like, oh, nature books, over to the left, right? Like, you know, history, over to the right. So you're just making it simpler because that open book test is full of so many different things, like floating in every direction that you just want to simplify it enough so that you can kind of give yourself an advantage. That's how I view it, at least. Um, okay, Justin, you've been quiet. And don't worry, Eric, <laughs> we're going to you, too. How is Next Gen Stats driving demand from fans and sports consumers for data-driven insights in other sports? Yeah, I mean, I would, um, and before I answer, I would just say we, uh, Intimus was so humbled when uh, NFL came to us uh, with uh, the, a focus on the player health and safety workload. Obviously, all workloads are important to us, but uh, knowing that the actual careers and health of the players, it was a, 
uh, we were really um, appreciative and, and humbled by uh, that, that partnership. So we're super excited to be involved in that. Um, on the on the stats front, uh, this is this is a global trend we're seeing with rights holders around the world. So, um, you know, rights holders are, are watching their, their fans. Fans are increasingly, particularly younger fans, are expecting, uh, requiring more immersive and interactive fan experiences. And um, and we're seeing uh, that play out with uh, sports betting. So you can imagine as latency decreases, people uh, betting on things that are happening on the field or not happening on the field, uh, wrapping all that into uh, watch party formats where it's almost like the stats are woven into the actual product and uh, it's something that people can uh, you know, engage on, compete uh, with each other on. So um, it, it really, and then you look at the, the demographics that everyone's trying to capture in terms of the audiences and um, it, it really is, I think the next five to 10 years is gonna be fascinating in terms of how the end product to fans is consumed. It's gonna be very different. So when you're looking at you know, what you're seeing from the NFL, and you're, let's say you're going into F1 or something like completely different, not, you know, there's no, it's, it's very, very different. And you're saying, these are the experiences we have built. What are your kind of shining stars? Like you're speaking to which part? It could be health and safety, it could be you know, anything. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, it, it really varies. I mean, we have a, a lot of different uh, use cases across our partnerships. So, with, you know, with F1, you, you mentioned, um, uh, they, have, they have something called F1 Insights, which it, they have uh, telemetry that, that tracks the, the speed and the location of the cars around the, um, around the track. And they're able to take those stats and create uh, insights and predictions uh, and basically um, assess decisions that are being made by the drivers and the teams during the race. So they have stats like uh, that measure cornering, uh, decisions around tire selection, um, braking decisions, uh, pit lane strategy. There's a whole uh, strategy around when you pit your cars and, and, um, and not. Um, so it's really creating another level. It's like the game within the game uh, that uh, all those stats kind of tease out and for very complex sport. Football is a very complex sport. Uh, F1 is a very complex sport. And creating these, uh, these visuals and simple um, stats, it really boils everything down and allows people to uh, really understand uh, what the people, uh, the, the players and the, the teams are, are, uh, are experiencing. Um, and I would also say a lot of those stats can be used not only for what shows up on TV, but, but you know, as you mentioned, Larry, they can be used for um, you know, d making decisions around, uh, you know, helping teams uh, win games for player health and safety purposes. Uh, they really are multifaceted in terms of how you, can, how you can use those stats over time. So Jennifer and I have actually worked together for like over a decade and, well, I took a little break, then I came back. But ultimately, part of what I use the next-gen stats for in my television role, you don't actually even see because creating the models on the back end and doing sort of the business development around how could we possibly be using next-gen stats to create better engaging segments on our shows or even, you know, I do a lot of predictions and we, you know, I, I don't know if anyone on TV has said my model more than me. I think I have, I have cornered the market in saying my model says, I predict, my projections are whatever, but we're trying to really build out this innovation strategy around how to use this data and what people really like. So, I mean, I'll, I'll take this opportunity to say, as you're doing the challenge, when it comes to looking at our next-gen stats, think about content too, because content is the way you engage. We, we love, I love football. I love that you're wearing a Bills shirt, even though you're not paying attention to me as I talk about you. And I love, I did preseason with the Bills, so Bills Mafia feels like second home to me. But, you know, look, at, at the end of the day, when we're talking about this, we love the sport. We want people to play for 17 seasons because, my goodness, how, like, who didn't love Larry Fitzgerald? Like, how can you not, right? So at the end of the day, these things are all to be more connected and around everything to do with the sport. Maybe not everyone who has a role like mine actually codes or actually uses AWS to create models. Maybe that just makes me a little bit like extra. But you know, at the, at the end of the day, the business development and content around it, it doesn't just extend to you know, safety and, and to you know, what you see on the screen for TV. And Eric, we'll get to that in two seconds. 
but it also extends to like how you're connecting with what's going on. I did preseason with the Bills because I wanted to prove that our AWS model, no offense to your current stadium, but the internet there is terrible. So when if I can get the next gen stats to work real time for a preseason Bills game in Highmark Stadium, like I can get it to work anywhere. So pr trying to prove out these models behind the scenes so that we can create a really nice NFL network or ESPN or any other network opportunity, that's really special because then you get to be more a part of the sport that he loves, that I love, that you love, and we all get to share the experience together. So that makes the whole thing kind of come full circle and actually leads me really well into what Eric does, which is our Thursday night football offering, and we'll do a little video on this because Amazon Prime crushes it. Hi everyone, Al Michaels. Welcome to the first of 15 Thursday night games on Prime. Side arms it for a touchdown. You kind of run out of adjectives. So you think you have and then you don't. These are the best fans in all the NFL. Feel the energy right now. Welcome everybody to Thursday night football. A history making night for us. The first ever Prime video game. Hopefully it can be a great game, but the Chiefs get to win the first one. What does this win in week two against this opponent mean to you guys? Down the left sideline, T. Higgins. Who they say gonna beat the Bengals? Oh! But how about this moment? That's my quarterback, Tony. Is there anything that won't do, yay or nay? <laughs> We're do perfect, and this is TNF on Prime. Let's have some fun, yeah! baby! Fire's broken up. Two types of teams in this league. Those that have franchise quarterbacks and those that are looking for franchise quarterbacks. Shove, it's his balance, touch it back, beautiful run. Let's go Brown! Great scissor reel. Good job. Love that. Um, Eric, can you explain to us how the TNF uh, property fits within Prime Video's portfolio of sports rights globally? Yeah, sure. It started in 2017, really, uh, when we had a co-exclusive with Fox. Uh, very early days, we hadn't really done live, you know, video before, so we learned a lot. You know, over the past, you know, several years, we've now built a global, you know, live streaming uh, business. Uh, and so, obviously, Thursday Night Football is pretty, pretty huge in our portfolio, but we've also got, uh, you know, a lot of other sports, you know, like UEFA uh, in, uh, you know, Italy and Germany and Premier League. We just wrapped up New Zealand cricket that we had rights to in India. Uh, so it's a it's a big property and it fits in really well, uh, not just to like live sports, but into Amazon in general. I love that. So the impressive figures that are coming out of TNF are almost as good as the sizzle. I, I love a good sizzle reel. So I love the figures that are coming out, but that sizzle reel is fantastic. What did you need to do to support such a large online audience? You're taking over this property. It's such a keep. I mean, look, our bosses, they, they're biting their nails to make sure that the online infrastructure can support this massive audience. I mean, these numbers are incredible. Can you explain to us a little bit about that? Yeah, my nails are short too. I bit mine as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, it started in 2017. We learned a ton. Uh, you, you can't just do something like Thursday Night Football in a year and, and, and be ready. We, you know, so we, there was a lot that we did, and, you know, I'll get into this architecture in a second, but, you know, essentially, starting a year out from the broadcast, we had to build seven tractor trailers that fit a ton of equipment. We had to buy all that equipment. We had to hire people. We had to make sure that every single, you know, service that we have across our stack was very fault tolerant and resilient. One of the, you know, complexities to something like live on the internet is, you know, we measure ourselves against what people have been seeing for the past 50 years on broadcast. The internet is not a stable, friendly, easy place to operate. And so we have to overcome all those uh, sort of obstacles and make sure that we're building really resilient uh, architectures. And then we also had to you know, scale to five times larger than anything we'd ever even scaled before. So we didn't even know how our systems would behave. So it took about a year of us just like doing tons of simulations, you know, building code, making sure that code was resilient. And we built features on top of that as well to sort of uh, you know, give our customers a really cool experience. So there's a lot that went into it. We had lots of simulations, chaos testing. We, we have these launch rooms uh, where every game there's, you know, 100 or so people coordinating, talking, looking at, you know, dashboards. And so we would do that and we would break things on purpose. And, you know, we, we went through that for a while. Uh, so there's a ton of, ton of uh, preparation that goes into that. Uh, if you look at the architecture, though, uh, I know it looks very simple. Uh, this is what fits on a page. But we're using over 60 just native Amazon web services to power just the live experience part of Prime Video, not even all of Prime Video. 
Uh, so it's incredibly complex. It's global, uh, and so you know we we have to build things to scale um, from the beginning. And, and obviously, AWS has has been an awesome partner for years for us. Uh, so you know, if you look at you know the basic building blocks of things like storage and compute, um, we use a ton of a ton of that. Uh, and then you get into like the actual getting the video stream working. So we have these trucks. We have quad redundancy. So everything that's coming in, we have multiple different types of feeds. You saw some in the video. You know, Prime Vision, where we've got the really cool stats feed, and you know, uh, then you see like our rotating feed. Um, we have all those that have got to come in, uh, and then we bring those up into AWS into Elemental. And so we use Media Tailor, and we use a lot of the you know, packaging software stuff there. To then bring that in, and then distribute that out through uh, you know all the CDNs. Obviously, we use CloudFront, but you know, depending on where we are, we have a we have a pretty sophisticated way that we balance this traffic almost bit by bit, making sure that what you get as a customer is the most uh, optimal uh, bit rate, and it has the least latency and the, and the sort of the best route and quality to you. And then you know, going down a little bit deeper, we're leveraging a lot of uh, you know, things like SageMaker, machine learning models. We obviously do a lot with uh, the next gen stats, but trying to figure out how do we build a better and better experience for customers that's not just the stream, but how do we, how do we build an experience around that that really helps uh, enrich uh, the experience for customers and help them, help them learn more. And at the bottom, we do tons, you know, it's Amazon, so we do tons of analytics. Every single thing that's happening, we're tracking that, we're recording that. We use that in a variety of different ways. We use it for, you know, balancing uh, uh, the, the different bit rates uh, that get distributed out. We use it for understanding, like, how our systems are performing. We use it for, you know, a million other things, dashboards, making decisions. Uh, is this service healthy? Does something need to happen? Um, so there's a ton that goes into it uh, that <laughs> we don't have no time here for, uh, but it's been pretty fascinating to, to, to build from, from the beginning. Casual, pretty simple, you know, just... Not just simple. <laughs> <laughs> I know you touched on it, but between the stream, and we saw a little bit of a preview of it, but between the kind of the, the, the stats stream as well as how the next-gen stats are being incorporated, can you just go a little bit deeper on that part? Sure, yeah. So we do this in a couple different ways. You know, one way that you maybe have been used to is, you know, what we call X-ray. You can be, you know, watching, and then you can go in really quickly, and you can start to see oh, hey, like now I have an overlay where I can see some of these next-gen stats on players. I know what you know, their pass you know, completion rate's going to be. I know if they're likely to get a touchdown. You can watch replays. You can do a lot of stuff and sort of interact in a more deep way with the broadcast um, than you know, what you see in a traditional cable. And then this year, for Thursday Night Football, we actually um, built something called Prime Vision. So you saw that a little bit there, but we're leveraging a lot of next-gen stats, a lot of heavy machine learning, computer vision, almost in real time where you're seeing route maps and you're, you're seeing all this, and you can watch the entire broadcast that way. It's you know, my favorite way and my 14-year-old's favorite way to watch, watch the game. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's been good. I love that. So Justin, extending this now to the future of live interactive sports streaming, kind of where is it going? What's next? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, for context, AWS um, uh, supports uh, Prime Video just as a very technically sophisticated internal customer for, for AWS. Um, so um, we're, we're, we're seeing the, um, the market evolve uh, where there's a lot more uh, fan engagement, there's a lot, a lot more personalization. Um, a lot of rights holders are wanting to have a closer connection with their fans. And in some cases, social media is a double-edged sword because on one level, you can drive a lot of volume. People see a lot of clips, but often you lose the connection with uh, the number of people who have seen that, uh, who they actually are, what they care about, um, uh, what their pro overall profile is. Um, so I think uh, we have tools now that allow rights holders to um, create a deeper connection with the fans, uh, identify new fan segments, uh, promote uh, content to those fan segments, um, and then uh, uh, monetization strategies, so retention, um, you know, th those kind of things. So that's a big, uh, a big f focus right now is, is helping the, the rights holders uh, establish a deeper connection with the fans who, who love their content. Um, the other thing I'd, I'd, I'd say, as I described it, just as kind of, um, personalization or optionality for fans. Um, so what, uh, you know, what Eric was talking about in terms of these different uh, versions of TNF Prime Video that you can consume as a fan, if, if you're a, 
an old school football fan and you just love the, the, the same form factor that people have been watching on TV for, for years, you can absolutely get that on Prime Video. Uh, but what is unique about them having a digital product versus linear broadcast TV is with a click of a button, you can see X-ray and it's a, a panel that will give you stats that are synchronized with the video that you're looking at. Uh, you can go uh, into Prime Vision, which is a, a stats heavy experience. Um, and again, that's just a click of a button away. In the past, linear broadcasters had to create simulcasts. So they would have to do the math on this percentage of the audience wants the traditional broadcast, and this percentage would like a stats heavy broadcast. And they would have to take the risk on having that game televised twice and then look at the ratings of both of those. And, um, and so by digitizing everything, you're able to put the fan in the driver's seat and let them just kind of decide what experience they, they want to have, which is incredibly enabling. And it also de-risks the distributor because they're not, they're not in, responsible for creating one thing and presenting it to, to the world. So, um, so yeah, I, I think um, Prime Vision is a good example of that. If, if you want uh, the audio to be in, in Spanish, they have the option to do that. They mentioned Dude Perfect and that sizzle reel. If you're a kid and you love Dude Perfect and you love football, you can have that experience. Uh, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Cynthia. Um, but it, it really is uh, just uh, the digitization creates a really uh, immersive and um, it just puts the uh, fans in the driver's seat. Larry, as you're embarking on more of a broadcasting career and you're using like the different inputs that we all get and in this broadcasting world, are you using more next gen stats or are you kind of looking at all of these different factors here and like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get you a job here on Thursday Night Football. So, <laughs> you know, what, what would you like them to do so that you could do more Thursday Night Football? Just saying, yeah, you know, the Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> feed sounds really great for all yeah. of us. Marie, Marie Donahue, she told me no already. She told me I needed some work. Uh, <laughs> No, I'm teasing. Um, no, I, I use it all the time. Um, a lot of times when you're trying to explain what you're seeing to, to the fan, like you don't want to talk over them, right? You know, like, like the way, you know, I would understand the game is probably a lot different from most of the fans and the terminology and acronyms that we would use. But in terms of the details and the stats, they're very helpful um, to be able to like, you know, draw out the picture. You know, if I'm talking about a matchup, you know, like this week, you know, Tampa Bay is playing against the New Orleans Saints and, you know, Mike Evans and, Marcus Lattimore have a very contentious relationship. So they love going, each other. going back and just seeing so, how intense their matchups are, and I, and I overlay it with, with stats, right? You know, Mike Evans has been targeted, you know, 60 times over the last, you know, seven matchups, and Marcus Lattimore has been within two feet of him on every single one of those targets. So he's done a great job of covering them. That might, that might be a reason Mike is frustrated with him. He's always so close to him. He's, 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 he's up close in, 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 his, in his kitchen all the time. You know, so like those type of facts, I like to be able to inter, interweave into what I'm trying to explain to the, to the fans. So it does, it does help a lot. I think we just came up with a new next gen stat in the kitchen. <laughs> uh, can, we, can we do that one for next year? We can roll that one out. We've got the in the kitchen stat. I love everything about that. It will be perfect. No, I, I agree with you. I obviously use a lot of those similar functions as well. And then, you know, since I've never played, like knowing what a big post is versus like all of these other things yeah. that you talk about, it, it always helps me put it in context as well. So I very much appreciate that. So I'm going to make you all answer one question for me to finish this off. And that question is, we're sitting here one year from today. It is December 1st, 2023. What's one thing in this area, like an advancement, maybe it's a health and safety advancement, or maybe it's like TNF reaches, what was the number for the Cowboys? 42 million people. Like if they can do that number, I mean, goodness, that's like 42 million is what the Cowboys did on Thanksgiving Day with the Giants. Usually you don't get like 20 million is a really good number for, for that, right? So what, what are we doing? We, we talk about in one year from today, what's one thing that you're like, this is awesome. This is what, this is what happened this past year. Start with you. Um, that's pretty easy. Uh, as we're rolling out a lot of our advanced models and analytics to the 32 teams, it's a reduction of injury, more specifically lower extremity injury. It makes up 60% of our injuries. Um, and with the training metrics that I was referring to, I think that it'll have an extremely positive impact um, working with the teams, all the different stakeholders, but directly to the players so that they understand what training loads are and they understand how to, how to manage those for optimal performance as well. So I'm hoping for a reduction of injury when I'm sitting here. And we'll get it. 
Perfect. I love it, especially because that ties back to your own injury, your no, no knees. You know, you're sitting here now walking really great in some awesome heels. So that's good. Let's make sure everyone has that same experience. Larry, what about you? I, I would agree with that, just reducing injuries. And also for me, I think everybody has seen, um, you know, you guys saw the, see the games in, being played in London. You saw the game played in Germany. You saw the game played in Mexico City uh, a couple weeks ago. I would love to be able to see an expansion of more games being played. I think, um, you know, the world has got a taste of the game that we all love here in the United States, and I would love to give the world more of that. Um, I think there's other markets, possibly Australia, I know, um, you know, Japan is, have a huge contingency of fans there. Korea, a lot of other countries, I think, could, could definitely um, would love to host, you know, an NFL game. I, I mean, watching the, you know, everything that unfolded in Germany, watching after the game, I mean, there wasn't a fan that left the stadium after the game. They I were mean, singing just, songs. Yeah, just, just taking it like all in. Like, they wouldn't leave. They yeah. refused to leave. They, yeah. wouldn't, they were not leaving. Um, you know, I played in a game a few years ago in, uh, in the UK, and... You know, I think Twickenham, Twickenham Stadium hosted a pop, it could probably seat 80,000 people, but literally it was like 300,000 people outside, just wanting to be a part of the experience, wearing every single jersey from Patriots to Raiders to Saints to Colts. I mean, they're just a fan of the game and they want more of it. And I hope that we can, you know, continue to expand on that schedule. I love that. Justin, what about you? I would say um, just the consolidation of all of these assets. When you look at the, the stadiums right now, they have so many different types of cameras. So they have cameras from the broadcasters, they have cameras from the in-stadium cameras, they now have player health and safety cameras, uh, there's a sensor in the ball, there's sensors on the shoulder pads, they're doing optical tracking of, of, all, of the, all the objects on the field. Uh, the refs, the players, uh, everything, uh, XYZ coordinates of, of everything. And what, what we're seeing is originally all of those workloads existed in silos uh, because they all happened in isolation and they all kind of grew up separately. But what we're seeing is that the lines between those uh, worlds are starting to blur. And a lot of the rights holders are realizing that they've put everything in one place uh, that they can manage it more uh, actively, they can do uh, more with it, and, and that it has that, those assets have so many purposes. So you can take, if you have the, the video and the data synchronized, uh, you can apply that to things that show up on TV, you can apply it to player health and safety, you can apply it to uh, in, in stadium experiences, uh, you can apply it to uh, sports betting, you can apply it to AR, VR, like metaverse experiences. Um, so it's really like a consolidation of all of these assets. And, um, and I would just, um, you know, I would just say AWS is a great platform for all of that to exist and, um, and to manage that proactively. So uh, I think that would be my, my pick. Awesome. Eric? It's always hardest to go last. <laughs> But I would like to see uh, Larry broadcast uh, one of our shows somewhere in another Thank country. Thank you. For sure. You know what? That's mine too. That's, that's yeah. I'm trying. I'm trying. I would say, uh, you know, there's. It takes a lot just to deliver like the experience that customers sort of expect, and we've built some features. You know, I think if you you know look a year from now, I guess we'll be like six days after Black Friday, so it'll be pretty stressful. We have that game, uh, <laughs> so maybe we'll have a big audience. That's one thing for sure. Would be fantastic. Uh, but, you know, like continuing to be really ambitious about the features that we're creating so they're not to get in the way of the content, but to actually help, you know, customers engage more. We're seeing younger audiences than ever engage with Thursday Night Football. That's like pretty cool. Uh, and so, you know, finding ways we can, you know, take a lot and leverage a lot of things that, you know, we work with AWS on and how do we build those into experiences for our customers. And so they, they're either newer customers that haven't really been into football as much yet, and so we're, we're bringing them in, or existing customers that want to get deeper into the game and really understand, like, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. Um, yeah, I would say that that would be fine. <laughs> on Thursday, great. any new Amazon Prime members get 30% off, additional 30% off on, 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 on Black Friday. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, you know... There you go. I love it. And incentivize yeah, as, long as, as long as the compute is there and ready for us <laughs> and yeah, AWS, then sure. And for dog treats. Anyways, uh, look, 
I think one of the most the interesting things that we talked about on this panel is something that you guys can all do, and that's my wish, that in one year from now, that people have participated in the contact detect detection challenge because it's really important and you guys are really, really smart. So to me, that would be a really huge win. Also, if you have mentees or people who are up and coming in the data science industry, we actually have a pretty good challenge every year where people get to participate at, and I, I get the, I'm so lucky to be able to host it, but they take the next gen stats and it's for up and coming analytics professionals that want to work in sports. At the combine, you get the stats, you get to compete, and people have gotten jobs from that. So if you have mentees, you can direct them towards that as well because we have so many great opportunities to get involved in the NFL. It's not just like, look, like you, you, 17 years, like you got to be built like that. I can now participate in the NFL because I can help out in the analytics realm. So if you please participate in all of those things, it would mean so much to all of us across here. And we're so grateful for all of your time today, your effort, your energy to be here. It's a really special and wonderful occasion. And if you're interested in seeing how AWS is helping to transform sports, of course, visit aws.com slash sports. If you're an engineer or data scientist interested in learning more about the First and Future program, go participate. Learn Learn more, absolutely, and of course, the NFL Contact Detection Challenge, and you can participate in all of our challenges at the NFL. Thank you so much for your time, and have a great, wonderful day in the rest of your conference here.